Hey everybody, so this is going to be Dijkstra's algorithm. I apologize for the audio quality. I have a really sucky mic. But we're going to get started right away. I'm going to try and cover as much as I can in the limited amount of time I have. So we're going to try and get through three examples in ten minutes, if possible. So the pseudocode for Dijkstra's algor algorithm is pretty straightforward. It looks like this. Um, so basically you're going to start and you're going to look for the lowest value in the distance column that's false. Mark that node true, and then scan all the false nodes that are capable of being reached from the node you just marked true. If the total path distance plus the distance to the scan node is less than the current distance of the node, then update the node to the smaller distance and change the parent node, and repeat the algorithm. Now you might not have a clue what I just said, so we're going to get right to it, and you're going to figure it out. It's actually pretty simple. So we start off with uh, a graph, and we're going to have two things. We're going to have... Uh, for one, uh, this graph right here. Now we have the vertices A, B, C, D, E, and uh, Z right here. And then each uh, vertice has an edge weight associated with it. So it costs 2 to go to C, and it costs 4 to go uh, to B. Now we're trying to find the shortest path. That's the entire point of Dijkstra's algorithm. We're going to find the shortest path possible to get from one thing to another. So you might say the shortest path to get from A to B is 4, but actually that's not true. You can go A to C and C to B, and that actually is 3. So that's the entire point of it. So we're going to start off, and we start off with uh, the graph. So V represents vert vertex right here. And then we've got known as to whether or not it's the actual distance, shortest distance, is known. Um, those are all going to start off as false. Uh, the distances are going to be infinity at this point. That's just uh, you know a technical detail that I'll explain later. And uh, like Batman, uh, this graph has no parents as of yet. So basically, we start, and they give us a, a predefined starting point. So let's say start at E. So we look at E, and we mark that as true. So we go to E on the graph, and we mark it as true. Perfect. And uh, we set the distance equal to zero because there is no greater distance yet. So from E, we're going to look at the other scan nodes. So we're here in the algorithm. Um, uh, we're going to look at every other node that E can reach. So it can reach C, it can reach D, and it can reach Z. Now we note that it can go to C for a cost of 10. So we look at 10 and we say, hmm, is 10 false? Or is, is C false? Yes, yes it is. Is 10 less than infinity? Yes, in fact it is. So we update it to this, and we set the parent to E. Now note, this is the important thing to note. This is still false. We haven't found the true shortest distance. This is just the temporary shortest distance that we're working with. Um, so we don't update this to true yet. That's very important. And we go to the next one. So from E to D, uh, that'll be a cost of 2. So we look at D, and we say, is D false? Yes, it is. Okay, and is 2 less than infinity? Yes, in fact, I do believe it is. So we set that to 2. And again, it's coming from E, so we make E the parent. Uh, then we look from E to Z. Z, as it turns out, is a cost of 3. So we go to Z. Is it false? Yes, it is. So we set um, 3, because 3 is less than infinity, as the distance, and E is the parent. Okay, so that's the first, first table. Now we're going to make another table, and my professor usually had us do like two tables to show we understood the algorithm. And uh, so this is the new table, the new table we're going to be working with, and you can basically disregard this table for right now, we're done with it, and we focus on this one. And what we're going to do is the next thing we do is we pick uh, the lowest, um, uh, the lowest distance that is false. So we look at this column right here, and we say, what's the lowest distance in this? Uh, 2. Well, actually, 0. Is 0 set to false? No, 0 is set to true. So when we go for the next lowest distance, uh, 2. So 2 is the lowest, and it's also false. So what we do is we just um, go to 2, and that's going to be our next, or we go to D. That's going to be our next uh, the vertex that we look at. So we go from E to D, and now D is the new place we work. Now we're at the end of the algorithm, and we mark this as true. 
So we now look at D, and we set this equal to true, which means the shortest path to get to D is going to be 2. And that's from E currently. So basically, now that we have this, we then repeat the process and we scan all of the nodes that are associated with D, but we don't make them true, we just scan them. So we look at 5, and, or I'm sorry, we look at B. B is close to D, and D can get to it. So we look at B and we say, um, we have 2 as the value, that's a current distance. So 2, right here, this is the number I'm getting it from, um, associated with D. We look at 2 and we say 2 plus 5, this number right here. I say 2 plus 5 is 7. So is 7 lower than anything that's currently at B? Well, we go to B, and we look at it, and it turns out, is 7 lower than infinity? Yes, in fact it is. So we update it. So 7 is lower than infinity. So we update it, and this is D. Perfect. Um, uh oh, that's off center. Let me fix that real quick. So, do, 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 do. And align to center. Alright, perfect. So now, uh, we've updated the first one, but we have to do that for all other vertices. So we look at C. And we say, okay, C. Is C um, going to be lower? So we look at from D. D is 2. So 2 plus 8 is 10. Is 10 lower than whatever is currently at C? 10 is currently what is at C. So in fact, we do not update it. It is not any cheaper to get to it this way by going from E to D to C than it is just go directly from E to C. So we do not update it. Alright, so we then look at uh, E. It turns out we've already marked E as true, so we can skip right over it. The last one we have to look at and scan is Z. So we look at Z, and we say, okay, is Z less than, well, is 2 plus 6 less than whatever is currently at Z? Well, 2 plus 6 is 8, and 8 is not less than whatever is currently at Z, which is 3. So we do not update this one either. And then we're done with that one. So we're done with this table, and we copy it, and we'll make another one. This is sort of the third table. Usually my professor only had me update the table twice. He might have you do the full algorithm, but that'd be very tedious. So uh, we then go back, and we start all over again. We look in the distance column, and we say, what is the lowest value that is, in fact, false? So we look at it and we say, oh, 3 is the next lowest, that's false. So we mark that as true. And we're then going to look at Z, and we're going to say, can you get anywhere from Z that you haven't already been? Well, it turns out Z has already been to D, and um, we know that that's not going to be any shorter. And we already know that E is the shortest that it can get to as well. So we don't do anything to update it. We already know that uh, 3 is the shortest path to get from E to Z, and it wouldn't be shorter to go 2 plus 6 to get to Z. So we're done. We're actually done with the algorithm. Now if we wanted to continue the table, we could do it one more time just for clarity. And here we go. We have Z updated. We look in the distance column. And we say, what is the lowest path in the distance column that's marked false? Well, it turns out that would be 7. So 7 is going to be lowest, so we mark 7, uh, or B, as true. And then we say, we go to B, we jump to B, and that'll be over here. And we say, what is currently at B? Oh, shoot, I marked that as B, not true. Okay, so we say 7 plus 5 to get to D. Would that be shorter? Well, it doesn't really matter. We've already visited D. What about C? C is marked false, so 7 plus 1 is 7 plus 1 uh, less than whatever is currently at C. 7 plus 1 is 8, which is in fact less than whatever is currently at C. So 8, and then we update the parent to be B. Finally, we look at A, 
and it turns out 7 plus 4 is 11, and since 11 is less than infinity, we update that, and B is the new parent. Now, this is...